What an honor it was to get to do an internship like I did at Crank. The things I learned working next to someone like Tony Crank was, it, it was powerful. He, the guy taught me things about life, let alone amplifier building. My name is Troy Bolton. Everyone knows me as T-Bone. This is the story of Crank. Tony Crank had a little side business. He was doing like amplifier modifications, uh, but he was also building his own amps. He had uh, a vision for a high gain amp that could blow everything away. That was a memorable amp. It was uh, one, of, one of the weirder ones I've had over the years. Good soldering, like the boards were always clean. If you open up a, a modern amp that was made in China, the board's gonna be, it, it, maybe soldered well if you get lucky but the board's going to be filthy so my first contact with frank was at a guitar show at the vfw in phoenix arizona where i met tony crank and they were making these one-off amplifiers out of old military surplus art there was a, a local band and these guys in this band were using these amps. One of the members of the band thought, if Tony Crank had money, would he want to go into production? Would he want to do this for real? And so they approached Tony. Tony said, if you can find a, a couple millionaires to throw money at this thing, we'll totally do it. <laughs> got their business was soaring huge distribution companies from around the world for two years the back cover of every guitar world magazine was a full page crank ad crank had many huge endorsers zach wilde tesla andy larock from king diamond Hank Williams the third death clock <laughs> What's about it? You know, I'm the guitarist too, Squisco. Brendan Small calls Crank and says, We want to use your amp in our show. Two of the early crank endorsers were animated musicians, Swizgar and Toki. And they played cranks. I also love to crank amps. I love all that stuff. So now that you know all the gears that I use, I was going to tell you how to play the guitar. The way I remember it, uh, I moved to Arizona to go to guitar building school in 2007. Took the amplifier building course first. The instructor, Jim Kramer, he knew of a local amp company and was already taking tours uh, with previous classes. I remember a couple of, of classes coming through, yeah. I, uh Met Troy, I think it must have been, oh, 2007, 2008, uh, something like that. He went through the AMP program, and he got hired at Crank Amplifiers as a technician. My introduction to Crank was sitting in the lobby uh, right next to a green baffle-boarded 4x12, 
and the owner, Martin, came out and was like, hey, what do you think of this amp? And I w I'd been staring at it the whole time. I was blown away. I was like, that's an amazing amp. He said it was going to Dimebag Daryl of Pantera. <laughs> Dimebag Daryl was reading a guitar magazine and he saw an ad and he said, that's killer. He liked the name. So he told his old lady Rita, you need to call these boys in Arizona, make them send me an amp. I told the old lady, I said, man, give them a ring and see if they'd, uh, you know, want to shoot one out to me. Let me check it out and see what's going on with it. And uh, oddly enough, man, there it was. Dude, I plugged up and, and I was like, God damn. And I started getting a little deeper into it, and I was like, no shit. And so we set out to build Dimebag Daryl's signature crank, the Krankenstein. We finished it on a Tuesday, we shipped it to him on a Wednesday, Thursday was the day he was shot. Dimebag Daryl, the former Pantera guitarist, was performing with his band Damage Plan, which included his brother at the Al Rosa Villa December 8th, 2004, when a gunman rushed the stage and shot him several times. Three people not including the gunman, died in the shooting. The gunman was killed by police. That was a huge, huge blow. We were waiting for a spokesman, and Dimebag Daryl would have been that guy to take Crank to the next level. Crank never got to see any of that next level because Dime didn't make it. And I truly feel that had Dime lived, he would have taken us Crank boys around the world. Dime was supposed to be an ambassador for Crank, not a martyr. The first crank I ever got, Revolution, back when crank was making one amp. A 100 watt, two channel, all tube, high gain, m and uh, Rivaled all the stuff. It's the amp that Tony Crank asked if I wanted to start building during my internship. One day I was doing just some BS work, sweeping the floor, probably putting together head cabinets and Tony walked by with this chassis and he goes, Hey man, you want to build an amp? And I was like, do I want to build an amp? He's like, yeah, man, I got these extra parts laying around, man. You know, like you're doing an internship, you know, you, you want to learn like how to build a tube amplifier. It's like, Oh, Oh yeah. From Tony crank. Yeah. So he scavenged up all the parts and sat them on my bench and I hand wired this amp. So this is about, this is like a T bone, slash uh, crank rev and I call it the crank and boner. 